I'm sick and tired of seeing people talk about the X1 Carbon. It is over a year old now. It is old, old news. Well, good news for you because this is not specifically a review on the X1 Carbon, but I have had this printer for about three months now and I, for some reason, have not uploaded any content with it. So the obligatory, this printer was sent out to me free of charge in exchange for content on the channel. So no one wants another review of the X1 Carbon and I'm fully aware of that. I'm sure all of you guys have seen way more reviews than you ever wanted to. But because I haven't made any content on this machine and I've had it for a while, I do have a small list of things that I really want to share with you and I am confident that one of them is going to be new to you. So without wasting anyone's time, I want to jump right into it. And the very first thing on the list is the form factor of this machine. Now, Bamboo Lab designed this machine to be very boxy, but that isn't actually a problem. In fact, it's a really, really good thing. See, everyone with multiple 3D printers knows that if you try to put a printer on a table, it doesn't fit very well. Something is hanging off to the side, whether it's a power cable or a USB port or something, maybe even the actual X gantry of the printer. But there's always going to be something and that makes it very difficult to put multiple machines side by side on a table and have them fit well. But because Bamboo designed these machines so boxy and there's nothing on the side of it that you need to have access to, you can easily place two machines side by side or three machines side by side and they easily fit on a table. Now the only caveat to that is the filament holder on the back of the machine, but that's about to play into my next topic. So the good old AMS up here. Good for 16 colors if you have four of them, but one thing that people don't often talk about is that you can easily use this for filament storage and swapping colors very easily if you're doing single color prints. Most of the time I print in a single color and it's typically not the color that's already loaded in the printer. So I'm constantly heating the nozzle to pull the filament back and rewinding the spool and it's a real, real pain. But with the AMS, you go into the software and you click a single button and then it automatically changes the filament for you perfectly every time, no fussing with getting the filament into the hot end. Being able to load up four separate colors into the AMS, this way you have the ability to print four different colors as a single color print, is a massive time saver and a huge quality of life improvement over other printers. And I really do love multicolor prints, but dare I say I prefer the ability to easily change between single colors versus being able to print multiple colors in a single model. So recently I've heard of a few different people talking about the ability that Bamboo has to dry filament inside the chamber, but it still isn't widely talked about. But this is a huge win for Bamboo and its enclosed system. Without the Bamboo, I currently operate five Sunlu S2 filament dryers, which I believe to be the best filament dryers on the market. So the S2 has a very large touchscreen that is incredibly easy to understand and it has six filament profiles from PLA, PEG, TPU and other different filament types. So you can customize every single filament profile and it remembers it when you turn the machine off and back on again. But these machines can only fit one roll of filament and they're a bit unwieldy to manage. So with the X1 lineup, you have seven filament profiles. It's easier to load and unload rolls. It's easier to set up and it can fit more than a single spool in the chamber at one time. So it is important to note that Bamboo suggests you only put one roll in the chamber and you put a specially designed cover over that roll so it dries better. So your drying mileage may vary. But at the very least, it is better to dry your filament elsewhere and then you can store your dried filament inside the heated chamber until you're ready to use it. If you guys are enjoying this video or getting any value out of it, I would appreciate it if you join the channel and YouTube has made that really easy because they put a conveniently placed subscribe button below the video. And after you're done hitting the subscribe button, I think that like button probably needs to be hit as well because rumor has it if you watch the video but you don't like the video, you're gonna have bad luck for seven years and I don't know about you but I really don't think I would want to chance that. 
So the next item that people don't typically talk about when talking about the incredible print quality of the X1 Carbon or any of the bamboo lineup is its automatic Z offset calibration. And dare I say the Z offset calibration is the most important part of any bed leveling procedure. Obviously bed meshing has been around for a very long time, but that is not gonna get you all the way there. Without an appropriately calculated Z offset, your first layer is still gonna turn out to be really, really bad. So in many of the 3D printing communities I'm a part of, whether it's a Facebook group or Reddit community or even my Discord, a lot of the issues people have are with Z offset calibration. They properly perform the bed mesh, but they don't do a good Z offset, so their first layer goes wrong. And since Bamboo launched about a year ago, a few other products have come to market with their own versions of automatic Z offset calibration. But in my experience and what I've seen online, the Bamboo lineup still is the best performing automatic Z offset calibration. And the last, but possibly the most important thing about this machine for me is its sleep mode. Now I never turn this machine off because it has a timeout period. And when that timeout period is reached, the screen goes blank and the fans go into a silent idle mode. This machine for all intents and purposes is turned off, but this is the key because the machine is not actually off. So if I really want to, I can load up Bamboo Studio and I can send a file to the printer and it just downloads the file and starts printing. With that feature, there's no more having to get up and walk over to the printer to turn it on, wait for the boot procedure and blah, 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 all the other nonsense. It's just ready to go all the time. I know I'm only just scratching the surface, but these five quality of life improvements are what make the Bamboo Lab lineup stand out above the rest and make it the best 3D printer on the market. So obviously every printer is designed for a different task and not everything I mentioned in this video could be implemented in other printers. The Ender 3 lineup is obviously a value printer to get a new user into 3D printing if they might not otherwise be able to get into printing. Or maybe the Ender 3 is a value option because someone doesn't know if 3D printing is for them. And the Voron category is reserved for users that want an ultra premium and customized experience. But it stands to reason that most of the topics mentioned in this video aren't found in a majority of the printers on the market. And I think that it would greatly improve the user experience if companies looked into implementing some of the topics mentioned here in their next design. So if you're interested in learning more about the Bamboo lineup or you simply want to help support the channel, I have some links in the description that might help you out. Otherwise, guys, thank you for sticking at the end of the video and I will see you in the next video.